Good morning and welcome. If you'd like to mark the Liturgy of the Word for this morning, you can find that at number 1177, 1177. Our opening song this morning, number 764, Lord Whose Love and Humble Service, number 764. This morning we'll sing verses 1 and 2. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who have come to celebrate with us this 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In a very special way, we welcome our visitors, those who are watching us live streamed, and those who will watch us later in the day recorded. Let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, 
You raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now let us give glory to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Now would those going to children's liturgy please come forward. My dear children, today you will learn that all people can be members of God's kingdom if they are willing to serve one another. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we ask you to look with love upon your children gathered here. Help them to understand that they will be members of your kingdom if they're willing to serve one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now you may go to children's liturgy.
a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Number 44, refrain one. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. Your words, O God, are truth indeed. And all your works are ever faithful. You love justice and right. Your compassion fills all creation. Let your mercy be on us, O God. As we place our trust in you, see how the eye of God is watching, ever guarding all who wait in hope to deliver them from death and sustain them in time of famine. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord, for praise is the song of the righteous. How happy the people of God, the ones whom God has chosen. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, 
yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, when I ask people why Christ died, most people will say that Christ died to save us or that Christ died to save us from our sins. I then ask why the Jews and the Romans of Jesus' time put him to death, and people will give various answers. Some will say that the Jews accused Jesus of blasphemy by calling himself the Son of God. Others will say that he challenged their beliefs and or their practices. I would say that Jesus was put to death because he preached and lived love is the only ultimately decisive reality in life. In today's reading from Hebrews, we are told that Jesus is the great high priest. As we read elsewhere in Hebrews, the role of a high priest is to offer sacrifice for sins. As we heard in Isaiah, if he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. In other words, Jesus offered his life to God for us. This statement contains two important truths. If Jesus offered his life, 
This affirms that all authentic love is sacrificial. All authentic love is self-revealing, self-giving, and self-sacrificing. If he offered his life to God for us, this means that for Christians, love of God and love of neighbor are inseparable. We cannot love God without loving others, and we will not love others authentically without loving God. The letter to the Hebrews emphasizes one other important truth. Jesus was only able to save us because he was tested in every way we are, but without sin. In other words, it was only because he was both fully human and fully divine that he was able to reconcile us with God, with others, with ourselves, and with our world. From the theology of the first two readings, we move to the gospel story. Once again, the apostles simply did not get the meaning and message of Jesus. Along with Peter, James and John were Jesus' closest disciples. Instead of seeking the glory of God and the salvation of others, they sought their own glory, that is, to sit at his right and his left in his glory. He told them they would suffer, but sitting at his right or left was not his to give. Likewise, the others did not get it either. They became indignant at James and John. At the end of the gospel, Jesus reminds them and us, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life and ransom for the many. Like Jesus, we are called to be self-sacrificing servant leaders. Today we celebrate World Mission Sunday. World Mission Sunday means something very different than it did when I was young. When I was growing up, it meant a collection to benefit the propagation of the faith, which supported both the foreign and home missions. During those years, the United States sent priests, religious sisters, and religious brothers to countries throughout the world to proclaim the gospel. For example, Sister Martine, my first grade teacher, was among the first sisters from Oldenburg to go to Papua New Guinea. She remained there for 50 years and was the last sister to leave. The theme of this year's World Mission Day is go and invite everyone to the banquet. The truth is, we are now a mission country. On Tuesday, when I will attend the semi-annual priest PLC meeting in Four Corners, there will be probably as many foreign or non-native priests as there are native-born priests. Because of lack of priests, lack of members, parishes are being closed, combined, or asked to share one priest. Therefore, all of us are called to be both evangelizers and re-evangelizers. My brothers and sisters, in the past, the priests and religious who went to the missions found people who were hungry for the Word of God and hungry for the sacraments. The question we must ask ourselves today is whether we and our contemporaries in the United States are hungry for the Word of God and hungry for the sacraments. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will give, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son 
is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray that the Spirit will work through our lives to bring Christ to the world. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, as we observe World Mission Sunday, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, first missionary of the Church, and for all missionaries and martyrs who give their lives to tell the glory of the Lord among the nations, that they may be loving, wise, and holy witnesses of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the witness of missionary saints, especially Patroness St. Therese of Lisieux and Patron St. Francis Xavier, that they may intercede for the fervent missionary spirit of the faithful, both nearby and far away, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they may be committed to justice for all peoples, especially indigenous peoples and those persecuted for their faith, and dedicate themselves to building a world at peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, may the people of the United States turn to the Holy Spirit as they consider the choices in this election. May we balance all the issues and make a choice that will lead our country and the world to peace and justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unborn, the marginalized, and the terminally ill, during this month in which the Church observes respect for all life, from, concep from concep conception to natural death, may we strive to promote the gospel of life in our families and communities, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Liz Davis's aunt, Patricia Cleary, Dawn Sidor's stepfather, Richard Ladd, and former parishioner Rebecca Glass Lowe, who died this past week. May they be welcomed into the paradise that God has prepared for those who love him, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the people of Little Flower Parish, this morning's special mass intention, and for all the intentions we recall now in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, pour out the gifts of your Holy Spirit on the world. You sent the Spirit on your church to begin the teaching of the gospel. On this Mission Sunday, we ask you now to let the Spirit continue to work in the world through the hearts and the gifts of all who believe. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The gift bearers this morning are members of the Woods and Havens family.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese, the little flower, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and, and let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please, Mary. Please, Francis.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
the announcements for this morning. Just a reminder that the Ladies Club is collecting travel-sized toiletries for the unhoused. There are collection containers at each door of the church. More details can be found in the Theresean. We are still in need of candy for our Halloween party. You may drop it off at the parish center, put it in the tubs at the doors of the church, or take it to the school office. Sign-up sheets are available at the doors of church if you wish to help with the Halloween party on October 31st from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. And the PPS is hosting a Dine to Donate fundraiser this Tuesday, October 22nd, at Texas Roadhouse. Flyers are at the church exits for more information. You must take a flyer in, in with you in order for us to get credit. And please join us for coffee and donuts immediately following Mass in the school cafeteria. Today, I want to strongly encourage you to attend the first in the series, Little Flower, Little Stories, this Thursday evening at 7 p.m. here in church. Several of our parishioners will be briefly sharing what the Eucharist has meant in their lives. Their experiences are real, deeply personal, and encouraging. Personally, I think Little Flower, Little Stories is an exciting initiative on the part of the Invite Commission. And there'll be one each month, different topic, so please come if you can. As you know, and as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, um, the way we introduce new servers is having them shadow veteran servers four times. And so today, we have one server who is shadowing for the first time, and that's Claire Kennedy, and uh, she's being mentored by Brita McGinley. Over here, we have uh, Mary Mann, her second time, and uh, Francis McGinley mentoring her. They did a great job. <laughs> and finally, you know, although I was only gone one week last weekend, it's good to be back. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us, in, what you give in this present age, and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Our closing song this morning, number 813, God Whose Purpose is to Kindle, number 813. This morning we'll sing verses 1 and 3 to a familiar tune. <laughs> 